Hey everyone, welcome back to the series called Finance Current Affairs. So in this very series, I pick up some important financial topics and then I discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I start with the first question, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon. It will help you get notified about all our upcoming videos. And if you are looking forward to get the free PDF of this session, then you need to join the Telegram group for the same. The link is in the description below. We provide all the free PDFs on this very group only. Now, let's start with the first question and the first topic of the day. That says, what is the basic objective behind the launch of Sarthi mobile app by SEBI? So, our markets regulator SEBI has recently launched a new mobile app. What's the name of that very app? It's Sarthi. And what's the basic objective behind this app? Why has SEBI launched this app? It is in order to educate the investors about the securities market, to make them more aware about the basics of securities market. Many of you are invest interested in investing in the securities market, but are not thorough with the basics of this market. So, if you have to the securities market, you have to know basics of the securities market, how to regulate the securities market, what securities market, mein kya -kya instruments we can deal with, what, what are all different, what different instruments are all about. We have the equities, we have the mutual funds, we have the ETFs. What are all these instruments, how they differ from each other. If you want to learn about such basic concepts, then this app is going to be really, very helpful for you all. In fact, I myself downloaded this app in order to check the type of content which was there. I will be sharing the glimpses of the, um, that very app. I have some screenshots and I will be sharing them with you all. which will provide you with an idea as to what all has been covered by SEBI in this very app. So as we have just discussed, the basic objective is to make the investors aware about the securities market. So, unko the securities market ke mein educate karna ye is app ka purpose hai. So, answer is option B. Now, talking a bit more about this app. So, Sarthi is the name of the app as just I have mentioned. Why SEBI has launched it? One reason is that in order to make investors more aware about the securities market. And in fact, if you check the data, various kinds of researches have been made and what we observed was that the number of investors who are interested in investing in the market these days are increasing. Or zyada log securities market mein invest kar rahe. In fact, more of the younger generation is now getting interested in investing in this market. And most of the trading which they are doing is the mobile based trading, mobile phone based trading. So more individual investors are entering this market. They are using mobile phones for trading. So having a mobile app to educate them about the securities market is really going to be helpful for all the investors out there. What is one of the major roles of SEBI? SEBI needs to protect the interest of the investors. It needs to conduct the necessary research work in order to help the investors, provide the necessary information to the investors. SEBI ka ek function hai ki investors ko informed rakna, unhe batana cheezo ke baare mein, taaki wo sahi decisions le sake. So uske function ko basically implement karne ke liye ye ek aur step SEBI ne liya hai, jisse ki zada se zada investors ko aur market ki knowledge milegi. Additionally, this app will also explain you about the KYC process, about trading, about settlement, about mutual funds, recent market developments, investor grievance, redress mechanism, etc. So for a finance background student, these uh, terms might seem quite familiar and quite simple. But there are many such people who although are interested in investing in the securities market, but they are not thorough with these basic concepts. So for them, this app can really be helpful. Now talking about uh, the availability of this app. So it's available in both the Android as well as the iOS versions. Okay, Android and iOS when you do this app, download kar sakte hai. it's available in both English and Hindi and going forward, it might get available in more regional languages as well. So Hindi may English may aapne koi topic ke mein samajna hai. So the app is available in both these languages. Now let me share some of the screenshots of this very app. Once you will do download this app, it will open the home page. This is the this first screenshot is that of the home page. So you can see what the options are. First is you can get to know about the securities market. Second is you can learn how to invest. 
Thirdly, if you have any complaint, if you have any query, you can get that request. Then there are some other SEBI resources which have been shared. Then if you want to learn more about SEBI, what's the role of SEBI, what does the SEBI do, all that is also provided over here. And then there is an option to contact SEBI as well. So when you will click the first option, that is know your know about the securities market, it will take you to this very screen where it talks about SEBI and the securities market. It talks about shares, mutual funds, ETFs, debts, bonds, the real estate investment trust, the in infrastructure investment trust, the derivatives. In sab ke baare mein humne kisi na kisi session mein discuss kiya hai. Now SEBI has uh, specifically made certain um, articles, small articles or certain PPTs in order to make you aware about all these concepts. So, if you have to briefly in sab ke baare mein samajh hai, to aap ye app download karke isko use kar sakte ho. Then if you will go to how to invest, if you will choose this option of how to invest, then it will take you to this screen where it talks about what is investment, how savings is different from investment, okay, how you can invest in the securities market, what is KYC, what are the, uh, then there are, are different educational material which are available, then they also have some information videos, some webinars, which might be really very helpful for you all. Moving ahead to the next option where you have how a query or complaint. So here you can see SEBI Investor Helpline is there. You can ask your queries over there. They have also prepared a presentation on the grievance redress mechanism, which you can go and watch. Then SEBI resources here, SEBI will talk about the investment charters. The um, There will be details about the various different kinds of initiatives by SEBI, SEBI website links will be there, you can contact SEBI, there will be some quiz test, essay writing contests, what's new, everything that is new which SEBI comes up with will be notified out, will be notified over here. Then you can get to know more about SEBI from this section called know about SEBI, we have what is SEBI, SEBI's role, SEBI circulars, FAQs and all such stuff. So now when the SEBI exam is near, this app can really be helpful for you where you can get an idea about each of these things in short. So if you have to revision your revision, you can use this app. Here you will be covered basic SEBI. Ke covered ho it might help you a lot in the interview as well. So do download this app and have a look at it. Now coming to the next question. So this is the next topic of the day and the second question which says SEBI has announced the construction of SEBI had announced sorry RBI had announced the construction of composite RBI digital payments index with March 2018 as the base to capture the extent of digitization of the payments across the country. So the index of September stands at what value? If you remember, few months back, I discussed this digital payments index. RBI had a digital payments index introduced, which we discussed about this discuss This index is published semi-annually. Okay, twice a year, this index is published. Ki jati hai, and uh, it is published with a lag of four months. So, March ki jo data was in July end. Mein ja ke aaya tha. Now, September related data is out in the month of January 2022. So, twice a year's data is published with a four-month lag. Now, what is this index all about? As the name suggests, it's a digital payments index. So, what is the extent of uh, accepting the digitization as a means for making the payments? All that is captured through this index. This is how much we have accepted digital platforms ko accept kar liya hai payments. Ke liye. All right. So, if we have a look at this very uh, digital payments index and we have a look at the value of this index then over time we can see a trend what trend we are seeing i'll be discussing that further so in order to answer this question first the september's data stands at 304.06 so abhi ke liye ye value 304.06 hai when it was introduced then it considered march 2018 as the base year so base year's value was set as 100. So we can see over the year it has grown. 100 se badke 304 mein pauj ke ye humne kafi digitization accept kar liya hai payments ka. Okay, so this index captures the extent of digitization of payments for September. This is the value and it 
basically demonstrates the growth in adopting and deepening the digital payments across the country kitna zyada hum digital payment systems ko adopt kar rahe hain kitna zyada ye zyada se zyada states mein cities mein villages village areas mein accept ho raha hai logon ne isko use karna shuru kar diya all that is tracked through or is captured through this this very index so as i have already discussed this thing that it is published on a semi annual basis with a four month lag so ek baar march march related data aayega iska ek baar september related so let's see what have been the past trend of this very index so march mein isko 100 pe fix kar diya gaya tha and when this data was released for march 2021 then they also calculated what has been the acceptance of digital payments across the past years so 2018 se 2021 tak ka data inhone record kar liya tha and from then onwards ye twice a year publish hona shuru hua so if you see it was 100 in 2018 then in 2019 153.47 then in september 2019 it further increased in march it further increased in september and then in march 2021 it increased to 270.59 and as it was except, expected we all are using more and more digital platforms more parts of the countries our country are accepting this medium so it was expected that it is going to increase and that has happened it has increased to 304. So, expected था ही कि ये इंडेक्स की वैल्यू बढ़ेगी क्योंकि लोगों ने ज्यादा से ज्यादा डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म को यूज करना शुरू कर दिया है एंड द रिजल्ट थ्रू दिस वेरी इंडेक्स now we have already discussed the value of this index in the past and what is the current data now I am going to discuss about the parameters on which this index is based although the session which i took when this index was introduced i covered this over there as well but it has been around 6 months six since we covered this okay bahut mahino pehle humne ye discussion kiya tha so let me brush up your concepts once again let's once again discuss the basic parameters on which this index is based so ye index hamara track karti hai ki kitna zyada humne digital payments ko accept kiya hai किन पैरामीटर्स के बेसिस पे वो ट्रैकिंग होती है वो कैप्चर होता है वो डिस्कस कर लेते हैं सो वी हैव फाइव पैरामीटर्स विच आर यूज आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग ईच ऑफ दीज पैरामीटर्स एंड द सब पैरामीटर्स फर्दर बट टू वेरी ब्रीफली मेंशन देम वन बाय वन सो द मैक्सिमम वेटेज इज गिवन टू द पेमेंट परफॉर्मेंस दैट इज फोर्टी देन टू द पेमेंट इनेबलर्स विच इज ट्वेंटी then to the payment infrastructure supply side factors which is 15% and then to the demand side factors which is 10% and lastly we have 5% weightage parameter called consumer centricity so let's discuss each of these parameters and the sub parameters under this which help us assess the extent of digitization in the payments in the country so ek ek karke har parameter ki baat karte hain sabse pehle baat karenge payment enablers ki what are the options available which help us to make the payment which facilitate making the payment kin cheezon ki zarurat hai tabhi aap payments kar paoge that is covered under the payment enablers like if you want to make a online payment you need a mobile phone you need a internet connection now if you want to transfer money from your end to someone else you need a bank account from where the transfer can be done then for facilitating all these things then we also have the aps system i covered it in one of the sessions so for that aadhar based verification is needed so aadhar is also one of the payment enablers then there are participants there are merchants who are offering the facility of actually making the payments through the digital means so they are the payment enablers ye sab aapke payment enablers mein aa jate hain internet mobile aadhar bank accounts and all then coming to the payment infrastructure demand side factor now in order to make the digital payments you need the payment infrastructure ones who are going to supply that infrastructure are the supply side factors and one the things which are demanded in order to make such digital payments they are the डिमांड साइड फैक्टर्स सो जो इन चीजों को प्रोवाइड करेगा जो भी मैं डिस्कस करूंगी वो सप्लाई साइड फैक्टर में है और जो चीजें आपको चाहिए पेमेंट करने के लिए दैट आर डिमांड साइड फैक्टर्स लाइक इफ यू हैव द इंटरनेट कनेक्शन यू हैव योर मोबाइल फोन और यू हैव अ बैंक अकाउंट एंड यू नीड टू मेक द पेमेंट वॉट डू यू नीड इधर यू नीड अ डेबिट कार्ड क्रेडिट कार्ड ए टी एम कार्ड इन ऑर्डर टू पे सम मर्चेंट 
or if you have a mobile connection you might need a ppi you might the prepaid payment instrument like you might need a e wallet you might need a gpay account in, in order to be able to pay that okay you might need mobile banking if you want to make the toll payments you need the fast tag so these are the demand side payment infrastructure जो पेमेंट फैसिलिटेट करेंगे वो पेमेंट इनेबलर्स हैं और जिन चीजों की आपको जरूरत है इन ऑर्डर टू मेक द पेमेंट विच आर फैसिलिटेटेड थ्रू द पेमेंट इनेबलर्स आर दी पेमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डिमांड साइड फैक्टर्स देन कमिंग टू द पेमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सप्लाई साइड फैक्टर्स हु इज गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड दीज डेबिट कार्ड क्रेडिट कार्ड पीपीआई इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स इन ऑल द बैंक ब्रांचेस द बिजनेस कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट्स बिजनेस कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट्स आर देयर इन द रूरल एरियाज वेयर द बैंक्स आर नॉट एबल टू रीच टू द कस्टमर्स अल्टीमेटली we need the atms we need the point of sale terminals qr codes some intermediaries they are the supply side factors then the maximum weightage is given to which parameter to the payment performance ye sab kuch hum kyon kar rahe hain taki log digitally payments kar sake so measuring the extent of digital payments happening is what is covered under payment performance you have provided the internet facility the mobiles are there you have provided the debit cards credit cards the bank branches atms are offering all these services but actually are people using them what is the value of transactions they are doing what is the volume of those transactions all that is tracked through the payment performance parameter so logo ne kitni volume kitna zyada digital payments ko use kiya kitne value ki transactions ki wo sab yahan pe capture kiya jata hai then if some individual new invest new users have uh, started using this platform then we have the paper clearing that is whether more of the checks are used to make the payments or people are using some other medium how much is the currency in circulation what is the extent of cash withdrawals log kitne zyada checks ke through payment kar rahe hain kitne zyada cash withdraw kar rahe hain kitni currency hai circulation mein isse pata chalta hai ki log digital platforms ka use kar rahe hain ya cash aur check ko bhi use kar rahe hain zyada se zyada payment karne ke liye so all these things are captured under the payment performance parameter and then the least weightage is given to consumer centricity so what is covered or tracked under this here we check what is the extent of awareness of the customers how uh, what are the complaints which are arising what kinds of frauds are happening with respect to these services now if the customer is making a payment online is there some system downtime down, down time like usually when we make payments the server is busy the payment at times does not get made so that kind of stuff those kinds of complaints etc everything is tracked under this parameter so ye panch major parameters hain is very index ke now moving on to the next question which is also related to this index only so it says the rbi digital payment index comprises of five broad parameters that enable the measurement of deepening and penetration of digital payments in the country ye abhi humne already discuss kiya each of these parameters have some sub parameters what you have to do here you have to identify that which of the following is not a sub parameter of payment enablers so in me se kaun sa payment enabler nahi hai internet mobile aadhar bank account hai digital payment systems volume nahi hai ये 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 क्या था ये एक पेमेंट परफॉर्मेंस का सब पैरामीटर है सो दिस इज आंसर ऑप्शन ए नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द लास्ट टॉपिक एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द डे दैट सेज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग रेगुलेशंस हैव बीन अमेंडेड बाय सेबी टू कट द टाइमलाइन टू फाइल द सेटलमेंट एप्लीकेशन टू जस्ट सिक्सटी डेज फ्रॉम द करेंट वन डेज टू मेक सिस्टम मोर एफिशियंट So recently, SEBI has amended two regulations. Let's first discuss about them, and then we'll come back to the question and answer it. So, one regulation that SEBI ne hal hi me amend ki hai, that is SEBI's Settlement Proceedings Regulations 2018. Now, at times you are dealing in the securities market, you are into some kind of a wrongdoing. आप कुछ गलत कर देते हो जिस वजह से आपके against case pending होता है, आपको fines देने पड़ते हैं. So If you you there is an option that that can get that case settled by just paying some settlement fee. So if you are engaged in any kind of a wrongdoing, you are a you are an alleged wrongdoer. There is some kind of a case which is pending against you with SEBI. Then without 
admission or denial of guilt you can just pay the settlement fee and get that केस सेटल्ड आपको वहाँ पे अपने आप को प्रूव करने की जरूरत नहीं है आपको केस कोर्ट केस नहीं होगा आप पे आप अगर सेटलमेंट फी पे कर देते हो सो देर इज अ मैकेनिज्म अवेलेबल वेयर यू कैन गेट द थिंग सेटल्ड गेट द पेंडिंग केस सेटल्ड विथ सेवी बाय पेइंग द सेटलमेंट फी सो दैट सेटलमेंट मैकेनिज्म इज डेट अंडर दिस सेट ऑफ रेगुलेशन सो इट हेल्प इन इंश्योरिंग स्पीडी एंड एफिशियंट रिजोल्यूशन ऑफ एनी काइंड ऑफ डिस्प्यूट विच अराइज so existing mechanism uh, was of about 180 days 180 days tak aap ye settlement kar sakte the so there was an option available that when you get a show cause notice show cause notice means aapne koi wrong doing ki aur aapko sebi ke end se notice aaya that you need to be present to justify your case you need to justify yourself you need to prove that you are right or you are wrong so once that notice comes up within 60 days you can fill, uh, file the application to get the case settled by paying the settlement fee but at times this time might lapse and you still have an option available that if you pay some more settlement fee then you get the additional time agar aap 60 days mein show cause notice milne ke baad 60 days mein apna uh, settlement application nahi file karte to aapko agar aap 25% aur fee de doge to aapko 120 days ka relaxation mil jayega ki aap further aapko time mil gaya you can file the application but now sebi has done away with this additional provision now within 60 days you need to file the application otherwise you have to be present for the case you need to admit your guilt and all such things okay fir settlement fee de ke settle nahi ho payega ye sebi ne is regulation mein change la ke amendment kiya hai so the question was asking about this only which set of regulations has have been amended so as we have just discussed the settlement proceedings regulations 2018 answer is option d further one more regulation which sebi has recently amended is the sebi fpi regulation the foreign portfolio investor regulation if there are some foreign investors who want to invest in the indian financial markets in the indian securities markets and different financial instruments like equity bonds and all they are the foreign portfolio investors ek hote hai fpis एक होता है फॉरेन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट एक होता है फॉरेन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट व्हेन यू वांट टू कंप्लीट कंट्रोल कंप्लीट मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द बिजनेस यू आर स्टार्टिंग यू न्यू बिजनेस इन सम अदर कंट्री यू आर परचेजिंग सम बिजनेस दैट्स एन एफटीआई जहां आपका ऑब्जेक्टिव होता है कंट्रोल करना उस बिजनेस को मैनेज करना बट इन एफपीआई यू बेसिकली वांट टू अर्न सम रिटर्न सो यू मेक इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स दैट्स एन एफपीआई सो एफपीआई रिलेटेड रेगुलेशंस है सेबी के कॉल्ड सेबी एफपीआई 2019 रेगुलेशंस these regulations talk about the registration of the foreign portfolio investors about different investment conditions different restrictions imposed on them some general obligations and responsibilities which they have to adhere to then what will what actions will be taken in case they default on something so all these things all these regulations need to be um adhered by these foreign portfolio investors so what sebi has now amended and notified is that sebi has given itself the power to grant exemption to these fpis against these regulations so sebi ne khud ko ye power de di hai ki wo in foreign portfolio investors ko in regulations kuch regulations ke case mein exemptions de sakega okay as of now they, these exemptions were not available to fpis but now if sebi can grant these exemptions so sebi or may on so moto basis or on application made by fpi can do so सेबी अपने आप उसको कोई प्रॉपर रीजंस दिखते हैं अगर या फिर फॉरेन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स के एंड में एंड से अगर एप्लीकेशन आती है तो प्रॉपरली रीजंस रिकॉर्ड करके ये एग्जामेशंस दी जा सकती हैं फॉरेन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स को इन रेगुलेशंस के अगेंस्ट दिस इज व्हाट सेबी हैज नोटिफाइड सो दिस वॉज ऑल फॉर टूडे सेशन आई होप इट वॉज यूजफुल फॉर यू ऑल विद दिस आई वुड लाइक टू एंड अप दिस सेशन थैंक यू सो मच